We're going to continue with our study of chemical equations. At this point, we have already covered synthesis and decomposition reactions, so you should feel pretty comfortable with those. We're now going to focus on single replacement reactions. These reactions are a little easier than the previous two and fairly easy to predict what is formed. In a single replacement reaction, you have a free element, and this element, if it is more reactive, will push another element out of an existing compound and then bond with the remaining ion. So your formatting is typical an element and a compound interacting. When you see that pattern, it's most likely that you will have a single replacement reaction. The single replacement reaction will take an element and a compound and form a new element and compound. This element will push out this element. Usually these are metals, not always. Sometimes they're hydrogen from acids. Then this element will bond with the remaining ion so that you get a new element and a new compound. Single replacement reactions will only work if the free element, the element that is not bonded, is more reactive than the element that is bonded. Then it is reactive enough to want to react. So it will push out this element and react to form the new compound. To decide if an element is more reactive than another, you use the activity series of metals. You will be given access to this on all quizzes and tests. The most reactive metals are listed at the top, so it becomes more reactive as you go up this list. Any element above any other can replace those in a compound that are beneath it. So lithium can replace all of these elements in a compound. If you put lithium into a compound, containing sodium, lithium being above sodium can push sodium out and react. Sodium can replace any elements below it. It cannot replace the two above it. You notice that hydrogen is placed here. Any metal above hydrogen can replace hydrogen from an acid. So magnesium and hydrochloric acid will undergo single replacement. Magnesium being above hydrogen will push the hydrogen out, forming H2, and then bonding to form the new compound. So let's look at a few examples. You're going to place aluminum with calcium chloride. Looking at the activity series, you see that aluminum is above, excuse me, aluminum is below calcium, therefore aluminum cannot replace calcium. What you would write to the right is no reaction. Sodium is above calcium, therefore sodium can push calcium metal out of the compound and bond with the chloride ion. You would then have to go back and take care of the balancing of the equation. For magnesium and an acid, again this hydrogen means replacing the hydrogen from acids like HCl or nitric or any of your common acids. Magnesium is above hydrogen, therefore it can push the hydrogen out. The formula for hydrogen is H2 and bonds with magnesium chloride. When you have the formula written correctly, you then need to go back and balance your equation. Potassium and water. You're not going to find, you're not going to use this hydrogen to predict metals that can push hydrogen out of water. Metals that push hydrogen out of water are either your alkali, alkaline earth metals. Okay. They are your group 1 and group 2 elements. And from previous experience, you know that these metals react with water to produce hydrogen and a base. This is still classified as a type of single replacement reaction. So let's look at a quick review of the types of single replacement reactions. One of the more common is taking a metal and placing it with an ionic compound. If the metal is more reactive, then it will push 
that metal out, creating aluminum metal and forming magnesium chloride. Metals and ionic compounds, very common type of single replacement reaction. So let's look at this reaction. We take a piece of copper wire and we placed it in a solution of silver nitrate and over time you can see silver metal forming on the outside of the copper wire. So if you look at the equation, does it fit the pattern of single replacement? Copper being above silver on the activity series should be able to produce metal and of course then producing the copper nitrate compound as well. The copper nitrate compound that forms will be copper 2 nitrate as this is the most common charge of the transition metal copper. You must remember then to go back and balance your equation. Another type of single replacement reaction is a metal in an acid. In this case, you look for the metal to be more reactive then H on the activity series, producing hydrogen gas and bonding with the chloride ion. Don't forget the formula for hydrogen gas is H2. Using that same pattern, zinc and hydrochloric acid would fit the pattern. You have a metal, you have a compound, your zinc is above hydrogen on the activity series. Placed together, you expect to get hydrogen gas and write the formula correctly for zinc chloride and go back and make sure that you have balanced the equation. Another less common type of single replacement is a metal that is reactive enough to react with water. This has to be your group 1 and group 2 elements, your alkali and alkaline earth elements placed in water will undergo single replacement reaction that produces hydrogen and a base. It does not produce sodium oxide as it might appear, okay, produces sodium hydroxide. Most likely the sodium oxide that is temporarily produced continues to react with water and of course metal oxides in water form bases. So this is a nice way for you to remember. Also remembering the name of the group 1 and 2 elements, alkali and alkaline earth means a base. So bases are produced. Looking at this example, calcium and water. Well, yes, you will get a reaction. Calcium, again, is an alkaline earth metal. Predicting the products, which would be hydrogen gas and a base. Bases, again, are metal hydroxides. And then make sure that you balance the equation if it is necessary. You would not just throw any metal into water and expect to get a reaction. You have to double check to make sure it is an alkali or alkaline earth metal. The final type of single replacement reaction involves halogens. And this time you have a halogen element that combines with a compound that contains halogens. Okay. In this case, the chlorine is going to replace the other halogen, bromine and push it out of the compound. You are not pushing the metal out with the halogen element. The activity series is exactly in the order of the periodic table. Any element on top of any other is able to push it out of a compound. So looking, chlorine is above fluorine, excuse me, above bromine, so chlorine can force bromine out. When you write the formula for bromine, do not forget that it is a diatomic element. Then the sodium and chlorine do bond. Again, halogen plus halogen compound fits the pattern of element and compound. Just don't forget that this is going to replace the halogen element forming the diatomic element and then bonding and write the correct formula for the product. Make sure in the end you always go back with all your reactions and balance them for mass and atoms. So again, there are only four basic types of single replacement reactions. The pattern is quite simple. There's always an element. There's always a compound. You always get a new element and a new compound.